And we back. It's the Lombardi with a video for y'all today. Um, I was going to do a tackling video, but the Bears footage wasn't up just yet. So stay tuned for that. Whenever I get that Bears film, I'll be dropping a film session about how upset I am with the tackling. A lot of these film sessions are going to be upset uh, based uh, moving forward the rest of the season. But few housekeeping notes then i'm gonna get the hell up out of y'all hair and get into the film uh shouts out to the patreon subs at first we did a a t-shirt giveaway monthly for all my ten dollar patrons well i kind of want to open up the giveaways to all my patrons or whatever so if you're a dollar two dollar five dollar ten dollar patron every patron tier we're going to do a merch giveaway every month it might even be a multiple person merch giveaway every month so stay tuned for that um it, you know we've had a pretty good year this year pretty successful so i just wanted to shout y'all out in that way so salute something else i wanted to do is I wanted to highlight some comments for the week, right? You know, once we get uh, all the videos out and we read through all the comments and sift through all the anger and emotion and hate, um, I just picked some comments that I thought stood out to me, comments that made me laugh or comments that made me sad, right? This first comment from uh, from uh, Kelvin Willis, he was like, my water's room temperature. I cut the game off at half. I saved myself from being highly pissed. I agree, because I cut mine off, not at half, but it was like in the middle of the fourth quarter. I usually start the post game stream like after the game but nah, i couldn't wait that long um also there was some heat in the street about Vach like running from people or that uh hey the cowboys lost so Vach is like you know not here or whatever and uh john donovan was like uh Vach is not the kind of guy to shy away from anyone say any smoke smoke sounds better from any smoke uh glad he took the time off it's good to be the king shots out to you john donovan that's how i feel man when you when you in control of your own destiny man you ain't gotta work on the holiday days and that's where i was i was not working on the holidays all right with that being said let's hop into the film shall we so this video so a couple weeks ago i did the dak prescott video the 2017 compared to 2019 dak prescott video so i wanted to do like a zeke version of that and this is what I noticed. I walked away wanting to do it with Zeke in terms of showing the differences or whatever. But the one thing I came away with was I just started watching Jason Witten, right? Look at look at look at Jason Witten at the top of the line of scrimmage right there. He's on the end down there. I noticed on all the big run plays from 2016, Jason Witten is blocking like he's never blocked this year before. Look at Jason Witten here. Right. And in the hood, we call this living off old bodies, basically. Like if you did some work back in the day, you were one of those guys back in the day, but you haven't put in any work in a long time. You're living off of your old bodies or your old reputation. You're not really into those things anymore. I think when we hear people say Jason Witten is a good blocker, he's living off that old body. Jason Witten hadn't been this good of a blocker in a long time. And I think that's something we missing. I got a lot more examples though. Please hang in there with me. First of all, it's funny because Jason was slow in 2016, but like he's even slower now. Like he even falls in slow motion now, but him being able to move the pull from backside to, to, to get to the front side, to log Eric Kendricks like this, man, we don't have that anymore. We don't have that. Plus, I'm, I mean, plus I think Jason was a was a solid receiving threat at this at this point in his life or whatnot. But now we've seen a lot of slow moving Jason. We've seen a lot of drops from Jason. Jason doesn't really extend the field very much. I know there's a lot of people crying for Blake Jar Jarwin right now because when Blake gets on the field, he can at least extend it a bit. He can run up the seams. He can run some deep counters, uh, some deep um, uh, corners or whatever. But you know, Jason doesn't really get up the field like that. This ain't a full film session this is just me looking back and getting sick of seeing jason Witten and what he was as a blocker now is our offensive line as good as the 2016 offensive line i don't necessarily think so i don't think so um i know ron leary is better than connor williams we're gonna have to take a look at doug free man we're we, we gonna have to compare doug free to Lael collins because i think what happened um i often defend a lot of Connor Williams now because of, you know, the not wanting to be spoiled. I think Cowboy fans are spoiled with the riches that we get from Connor to be that. 
but it, but he he's not going to be those guys, right? So when he does something bad, he's being an average guard. He's not being a terrible guard. He's just blending in with these guys. I think we gave Doug Free a hard time just because he was surrounded with other pro bowlers. Like like just me watching old film, um, just looking at some old runs from from uh, Doug Free. Doug Free wasn't terrible. He just wasn't the other three. You know what I mean? He just wasn't those three Pro Bowl guys, and people couldn't wait to push Doug Free off a bridge. Now, I wasn't the YouTuber uh, back then that I am now, but I don't know. We're going to have to have that conversation about Doug Free. Let's uh, let's watch another Jason Witten clip. I want to um, take time to direct people to Okoye Media. He did a fantastic video on, um, you know, the differences in the uh, – I would say blocking, not like, not like the whole run game, but the offensive line la uh, uh, this year uh, compared to the offensive line in 2016 because he was doing like this Zeke study or whatnot. Take a look at his videos, and he basically talked about bodies being on the floor, right? The one thing that we're missing in 2019 that we had a bunch of in, in 2016 was bodies on the floor. I totally agree with that. And even if you go back to look just to kind of get affirmation there, you still get your eyes on Jason Witten, who's at the end of your line of scrimmage down here on the left side and you just see him down blocking defensive ends right jason Witten has a hard time blocking blocking linebackers now but he's putting hands all over on defensive ends in 2016 i think all these things that we're missing man we're missing bodies on the floor we're missing top tier left guard play kind of should be a tackle somewhere but we'll cross that road um like top tier left guard play top tier like keith smith like, can we say that Keith Smith is a better is a better blocker than like <laughs> than Jamez Holawale? Can we can we go ahead and say that? Can we go ahead and say that? I also think Zeke is a better Zeke was a better runner back then. Zeke's still fantastic now. Zeke's still top tier as a runner. But maybe us giving him so many carries back then, maybe that slowed him down a bit. Let's take a look at Doug Free putting bodies on the floor. We 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 ain't had that in a while, man. Um, but hey. You know, every offseason when Vach says, hey, maybe we should invest in offensive line, people say, I'm tired of drafting offensive line. Like, damn, offensive line is one position. It's five. You know what I mean? It's about 50% of your offense. Well, it's 11 people. So, like, what, 40 Six percent. I don't know. I'm not math guy. Uh, chat box, tell me what's the what's the math on that? What percentage of your offense is your offensive line? So when I say draft offensive line, that's not me saying, you know. Like oh our 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 line is good we sh we shouldn't draft there like that's fifth that's forty six percent of the offense or whatever damn number y'all gonna give me like we should be investing in that and um whether it be one day when Tyron Smith's back back hurts too much I think Zach Martin's back is hurting him too um he's playing in injured you know whether um Travis just up and surprise you one day and just not you know you know come to work that day or you know hey you just never know what's gonna happen but uh. We should probably take a look at these things. Offensive line, fullback, blocking tight end, all that good stuff. This is Jason Witten right here, and this is a down lineman. This is a whole 3-4 defensive end right here, and Jason Witten just going to line up and just put hands on this young man. Jason by himself, basically. Like, Doug did kind of put that support hand out there, but that ain't, like, help for real, like, because he had to come off on his linebacker on 50. Jason Witten is blocking this defensive end by himself, right? Like, shots out to that, but Jason can't do that no more. He's living off old body still, though. Um, and you know what? If y'all want to put that on Jason Garrett, cool. Um, the the fact that that Jason Witten is not what he once was, but we're but he's he's given like 52 snaps a game or something like that. If that's something y'all want to put on Jason, I, I'm not, I can't hate on y'all putting that on Jason, man. Cool, put that on Jason. But man, Jason Witten don't move people like this, though. You don't move people like that, though. Listen, man, this ain't a full-blown film session. I didn't want this to um, actually be a thing. I was just trying to make another film session. This is what I came up with, uh, just the information that I saw off the rip. So I'll still be working on the other film sessions. I just wanted to put this out today. And I put it out today because the Bears film wasn't up yet. So when I get the Bears film, or at least the All-22 Coaches Cartel long view, when I get all that, then I'll be putting together a Bears, uh, a Bears Patriots Bills video on how terrible we've been tackling these last three games. All right. Um, Y'all hold it down for the Doski Woski, man. Until next time. Peace.
My cable bill was way too high. I reached out to AffordableSticks.com. They sent me a fire stick, plugged that thing into the HDMI. Now I get unlimited shows, movies, and live TV. I'm a huge sports fan, so I love League Pass, Sunday Ticket, and I get the pay-per-view fights for free. That's something for the whole family. You can buy a fire stick for every TV in the house and still spend less money than you would on cable. That's AffordableSticks.com. There's a link in my description. You should go click it. Cut the cord, man. After canceling my cable, I saved $2,400 this year by switching to Beast TV through channelsforcheap.com. Some people pay $200 plus a month. I paid $120 a year. Or you can go $15 a month if that's what's convenient for you. You get 2,500 HD channels. A thousand of those are in English, and there are plenty of other international channels, TV Guide, and we get all the sports. One of my favorite things is this multi-screen feature. So if I don't know what I want to watch, I can tune into four different channels at one time. That you can watch on four different devices, and it's available on Fire Stick, Smart TVs, Tablets, and if you're on the go, you can watch TV on your phone. Hit the link in my description or go to channelsforcheap.com where you can get a free seven-day trial. That's a whole week for you to just sit down and play with it and see what you like about it. Then come back and make a purchase. If you have any questions, go to channelsforcheap.com. Hit this little button right here and they'll respond to you immediately. That is channels number four cheap.com. The link is in the description. I highly recommend it. Let's do it. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that's subscribing on my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.